Hey everybody, welcome in that new video tutorial about how to use Maya fields with the Golem physics. So I'm uh, having uh, just um, a simple scene where I'm having one type of characters playing one motion behavior, uh, moving forward, uh, 60 characters populated and that's it. And uh, here in that scene, I would like to use some of the Maya nodes to control the physics of my characters. So here I put some end particles uh, and also assign a vortex field to those guys. And uh, you can see we can, you know, control exactly what's going on, provide some uh, really nice controls with all those Maya fields. And uh, what I would like to do is apply that exact same uh, transformation to my characters when they are using the physics behavior. So um, let's see how we can uh, do this. First, we'll need to bring some uh, physics uh, for our character. So I'm going to grab a physics behavior. I'm going to put this, let's put it at the same uh, place than my motion behavior. So I'll be able to accumulate inertia as soon as my physics will turn my characters into um, ragdolls. Um, I'll have some inertia coming from the motion behavior rather than you know, connecting one after each other means that I'm going to stop playing the motion behavior. Then I'll go into the physics so I cannot benefit from the inertia of the animations there. So I'm going to grab this here and I'm going to say um, that physics behavior, I want to stop it. So for all the frames it plays, it's going to accumulate inertia for all the joints. And uh, when it ends, it's going to turn the characters into physics. So I'm going to bring a um, current frame trigger here put it into the stop trigger once again set it as root with a right click and uh, now I can say what I want to do is uh, physicalize my characters as soon as we reach frame 50 probably add more frames there and uh, see what's going on after frame 50 we can see the characters they're all falling and hitting the ground here uh, so we've got a default ground into the physics locator we've got a default plane within the environment mode uh, so this is why the characters, they are not falling through the grid. If I was about to provide a known environment, um, I'll have my characters falling through the ground. So I, I'm going to specify a default plane. I can also provide some colliders. Please refer to the crowd rigid body section of the documentation. Great. So that's the first part here. And then the second part is we want to apply that magnitude to those characters there. So I'm going to bring a force behavior here. I'm going to put it right after the physicalize. So first I'll turn my characters into ragdoll. Then I'm going to apply a force to those guys. And you can see that uh, since a couple of versions, I'm using I'm using 739 here, but I think it's here since 735. Um, we can connect a Maya field into this. So I can grab my vertex field here. I can go into my force behavior there and I can map those two together. I also need to change my force mode from impulse to constant force. Impulse means that I'm going to apply that vortex field for just one frame. Constant force means that we're going to apply that vortex field for the whole duration of the simulation. Here, as my characters, they're pretty heavier. Yeah, they weigh heavier than my particles here. So uh, this is probably why uh, we can't see any effects. So let's boost that guy there. Let's put a magnitude of 100 to see if uh, we can see something better and here we go now we can see them moving around that uh, vortex field so the position of the field has an influence on the crowd so i'm going to put it back to zero zero so it's uh, all going to be centered around my scene and you can see that now my particles that they change great so probably let's make this more entertaining uh, so what we can do here is also combine it with uh, other forces so maybe um, because here all the characters, well, they move forward uh, apart of each other. So let's say we want to group them back. Um, we can add another force which will be added on top of the first one. So this is going to be, let's rename this, um, the vortex field, right? Um, let's put another force behavior. Let's put it at the same spot. So it will be played in parallel. And that's going to be my... Um, um, middle drag, let's call it middle drag, it's uh, fine. Middle drag will be also a constant force because we want this to be applied on, um, you know, on the, 
on the long duration of this, I'm going to create a locator, which will be um, my um, direction for my drag. So let's create a locator from Maya. Let's put it into the same place that my vortex field in zero, zero, zero. And let's connect that guy by um, selecting it in the viewport, in the outliner, selecting my middle drag as, middle drag as well, um, and mapping it into the direction locator and into the magnitude locator as well. Oops, sorry about that. Let's close those windows. And here we go. Sorry. Uh, I'm having multiple sessions of Maya being open at the same time. So yeah, sorry about that. Now we need to set up some values here. So we need to specify, um, let's make that editor a bit smaller. Uh, we want to specify what's the distance for that guy. So we're going to say that guy will have a, a maximum distance of 40, 40 units. Um, so it, uh, you know, it englobs all the crowd. Uh, the magnitude when we are uh, really close is going to be uh, zero because uh, we don't want to drag more if we're close to the origin here. But uh, if we're really far, we want to drag in. So uh, if we're far from the locator, let's put some value there. So uh, 500, let's say, let's see how it goes. So now I have my characters and yeah, that's better. Now we've got all the characters converging, still staying into the same kind of zone. Uh, the, obviously the end particles, they're not influenced by that new behavior here, that middle drag, uh, because it's a golem field. Uh, but our characters are actually uh, being driven by it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and probably the last thing I want to say, because I want to do, because right now they're all like um, gliding onto the ground. I would like to put them slightly above. So I'm going to grab a new fourth behavior. Put that, if I can, into my parallel. Great. Not easy. Um, so you really you have to wait for that parallel to, you know, landing up. So uh, as soon as I put it here, right in the middle of the two bars and I release, um, have uh, uh, that parallel behavior operator uh, lining up. So I'm going to call this the up drag. And we're going to create, uh, we're going to use another mode here. So once again, we want it to be a constant force. We want that force to go up. So on the Y axis, and uh, let's put a magnitude of 500 and see how it goes. Yeah, not so bad. So now we've got a vortex of characters which are combining different forces together. And you can see the characters, the physics of the characters follows the inertia of the different fields we are providing to them. They are colliding with the other characters. They are colliding uh, with the ground or with the environment if we had any environment here. And uh, you can have a pretty great tornado of uh, character. And when you're happy with that, we can just provide more characters. Do something like this. Replace the particle system. And, uh, and uh, yeah, do a tornado of characters. So yeah, that's it for this video. Keep in mind that uh, if you're having more Maya fields that you want to combine, here we've been combining multiple force, one Maya field, one uh, middle drag, one up drag. But if you want to provide more Maya fields and assign them to your characters, it's just a matter of bringing a new force behavior, setting up to constant force, uh, set the Maya fields to the actual field, and all those guys will be combined and added together. Uh, so if you want to bring whatever of those guys here, that's something you can do and have your physics being uh, uh, reacting to this accordingly. So um, yeah, hope that helps and uh, see you into the next video.